what's going on everyone welcome for the first time we're back to another dlj works video and this is a follow-up to the video i actually made yesterday about easy technology careers and here it is right here i actually had it playing right here let me pause that but easy technology careers to teach technology applications in schools somebody asked a question but we're going to just quickly break this down because in that video i actually realized there's some other details too that i really didn't go over based off of a question that was asked of me but we're going to break down how to become a technology teacher for elementary middle school and high school so this video comes from this question from Ken Go Ga Gogover, I think I pronounced that name correctly, forgive me if I did not, but shout out to this person. Thanks for the video. What degree in training will you recommend? And I replied, thank you for your question. The short answer is a four-year information technology degree with a technology certification in your state. I will make a whole video breaking this down based on your question. And here we are today because there are some key key pieces that was a talking head video with the course jump at it and everything else but I, there was some key information in that video that i wanted to just get out to let people know if you're in the technology space and i've realized i've been teaching for several years now close to, this is my eighth year in education three teaching english and five teaching technology this being my fifth year at this moment but i am you know still involved in technology regardless and this by far is a very um it could be a very stress-free career for you all right without all the hustle and bustle of being in the business world and, and doing some other things with freelancing and everything else you can still teach and, and maintain a good uh, consistent salary and still do your side hustle stuff still do your freelance web design and development things so let's keep going with that now let's go over the educational side all right what degrees do you actually need and i'm going to be real with you I, even though i have this these bachelor of science degrees listed tech degrees listed you could really have any degree to be honest you could be made you can major in english my major is english and as long as you have the technology certification within your state to actually teach it and you know the, the actual content you study for it and everything else to pass that certification at least here in the state of texas it may be different in some other state but i teach in the state of texas you can actually you can actually teach technology applications without having a, a technology degree but why do i recommend that with all that being said and before i even answer that let me show you my certification here so we can see that i actually have all right let me draw around here so you can see okay i actually am certified here in technology applications all right with my and this is public information so it's nothing private very public and it expires 2027 and i also First got my first certification, which was English language arts and reading grades eight through 12 here in the state of Texas, which expires also uh, May 31st, 2027. So let me exit that. So that was just to prove to you that I have an English major and those were my certifications here in the state of Texas. So I could teach early childhood to 12th grade, senior year of high school with my technology degree. But for English, I could only teach high middle school eighth grade and high school which i'm not i have no desire to teach high school at all whatsoever I'm, I'm middle school bound i'm a middle school teacher but let's get back to this though with all that being said why am i specifically suggesting you major in these particular degrees one of the primary reasons is the focus on content you all right because if you're if you're majoring in something else like philosophy and everything else that's extra work that you actually have to do in order to understand the content that you will be teaching but if you're already studying this going through a four-year degree and you're majoring in something like information uh computer information systems or information technology um and design or whatever the case may be an it degree standard it degree with some concentration or whatnot then when you take a certification test for your state it's going to be a lot easier to pass it than if you're just joe schmo with the architect degree or an anthropology degree and you're trying to teach some technology course and you have to pass that certification so that's why i'm specifically recommending you stick into the pathway because also you, even if you don't want to teach let's say if you want to be if you're a web developer now they're adding web development curriculums to a lot of these traditional four-year universities and and i actually have a two-year degree from devry and web graphic design so that gave me content because i didn't study for the certification test that i passed here with technology applications i just went in took the test 
And, you know, God be with me that I remember a lot of my content that I got from DeVry and that actually helped me. It, Believe it or not, it really did help me. There were a lot of questions like color theory on the test and some web design questions I wasn't expecting. And I knew that and I was able to pass it. And that's because I had the two year degree. So that's another route you can go. You can double major. You can get a two year degree in a um in the IT field and get a, another degree, maybe in math or English, if you want to do that. But I I wouldn't really recommend that because you want to stick with your content and that's just going to be too much money and stay in the school and all that other stuff. So, but yeah, that's, that's what I actually did, but you want to stick through that because of the content. And here are some examples that you, you can get. There's other IT degrees, I guess, but these are some of the common ones I found. Computer science is obviously the more popular one. You got web development, web game development so if you want to do html5 games you want to learn web game programming that's also another one then you got standard video game development mathematics so bachelor of science in mathematics so mathematics is a very general area and many people already just assume by the societal stereotype that if you're good at math you're automatically going to be good at technology because mathematics is a thing that's hard for a lot of people english will probably be the more common thing if people had to major in something easier but mathematics is going to be very hard to actually get for a lot of people so they would automatically assume by uh default what am i trying to say um um object of deletion or whatever the case process of elimination that's what i'm trying to get at forgive me process of elimination you're just going to be good at technology so cis computer information system cyber security all those things so if you get a um, if you get the one of these degrees, it's going to make your job a lot easier. And like I said, you can veer off and do other things. You don't have to become a teacher. You can work in the IT field easily and your degree will just bring you just a ton of immense value. And if you also decide to work in this field, work in, your, in the IT field and get field experience, but then go into teaching, that'll actually make it even 10 times easier to do. All right. That's what I actually did with my little web graphic design degree from DeVry Freelance. I, I did a lot of like homemade websites just straight up with HTML and CSS from scratch, coding from scratch, from the ground. I got it from the mud. All right. That's what I did. And that helped me develop my own content and understanding to get that certification. So that's something you want to consider. Now, you can also if you want to. Well, let me say this in education, getting your master's degree matters, getting your doctoral degree well, I'm not going to say it matters, but it helps out a lot if you're trying to move up certain positions you can't even get if you're trying to move up unless you have higher education. So you need higher education in the field of education if you expect to get a higher position. All right. So if you get a master's in educational technology and you have a four year degree in, in one of these other practices, these these curriculum, these majors, then you could get a job as the as the district's IT manager or you could be your campus leader for helping configure the technology and applications if you your campus decides to adopt canvas and they need logins or something like that or help with setup or if they have ixl or whatever program whatever program that needs to be connected whatever website you'll be the go-to person for your campus but you need a master's in educational technology or something equivalent maybe a master's in uh information technology or information design and technology cis uh web development it's something equivalent to that so you can go ahead and make that pivot. And if you have these go on this pathway, this this streak or whatnot, then you'll set yourself up to be in a position that you actually need to be in. All right. So that was a lot of talking on that one because I needed to show you specifically. And I don't think I showed you this website here, but I'll leave a link in the in the description or pinned comment so you can actually see some other uh, programs that you can get into more in depth with the salary and all that other stuff based on what this website is saying about list of four-year degrees and, and so on and so forth let's keep going now certifications all right i showed you what my certifications are and that's just for the state of texas however you need to check your local state requirements in order to figure out what you need and here i pulled up this is for new york all right i just randomly picked the state so new york and if you're trying to be a career technical teacher, they might not have technology applications. It may be something equivalent to that, though. You have to figure out what that is based on what your state is offering. And this is state of Texas, which is technology applications. This is New York that we're looking on. But some of their pathway uh, alternative certification offers that they have is they have uh, college coursework, New York state teacher certification exam. Uh, let me see here. Paid full time classroom teacher experience. 
mentored experience, computer technology, seven through 12. So it looks like this right here, like I said, these are pathways if you're trying to get certified. I haven't looked in deep onto these. I just went to the website to see what the certification requirements would be. So you have to, I just did a search career and technical teacher, information technology, adolescence, seven through 12, because I my focus is on middle school. So I would only focus on those last two years, seven through eight. Uh, select the title computer technology and you're trying to get a professional certification following are all the pathways available to become certified in your selected area all right so you can take as any of these alternative certification courses which is what i'm assuming that they are in order for you to get that certification and it may be if i'm reading this right let me see uh, education high school diploma ged uh, so individual evaluation taking a pedagogical core so it looks like you can already just skip. Let me see. No, you can't skip college. So, all right, they tell you what you need to do in order to go down that route so you can become um, certified in computer technology. So each state is different. Some states are going to be more stringent than others. I know it's the state of Texas. It was a matter of having your four-year degree. And this was before all this teacher shortage talk actually began. Even when I got certified, I got certified in technology applications in it's 2016, I believe. I just went and took the test, like I said, and boom, got it. So, but I already went through the certi alternative certification, which I had to take some night classes and get alternatively certified. I had to be reviewed by a mentor person from the program, and they had to give me the okay that I was okay to be a teacher within my state. So, only get certified in what you need. Do not make yourself available to other functions with additional certifications. Me being certified in English, though it makes me more versatile and flexible. Also, if, if let's say, for example, if the school decides to get rid of, you know, they decide to X out their technology elective because of funding got cut short. So your elective is gone. You can only teach English. All right, fine. I could do that. But if you're somebody that has no interest in teaching a core subject, and that's what my last video was about, it was to elevate and ease the stress because when you're teaching a core subject, there are stresses. There are some things that come in the way of making the teaching situation not fun. <laughs> Let me just say it like that. Makes it very, very stressful because of all these extra things. And I talked about that in my last video, the, the bureaucracy of the testing and other things, the preparation, all that, you know, so that's why I even that's why I'm even suggestion uh, suggestion suggesting that you just stick with the technology certification. Get one certification. Do not make yourself available because they will use you to teach something else if need to. And, and maybe some states, depending on how desperate they are, they'll they'll do something illegal, all right? Because <laughs> it's illegal for you to try to teach a different prep and you're not, you're not being certified to teach that prep. If you're not certified to teach elementary kids, then that will be... That that'll be a legal thing waiting to happen, and schools can get you know they can actually get sued for that unless the state minimizes the requirements and opens the floodgates. So it's just based on what your state is willing to do. As they have this year, they're allowing just any Joe Smo to teach off the street and and really minimize any state requirements for teachers to get in. So really check with what your state is offering and go from there and seek alternative certification. I don't know how many people are actually majoring in education by itself. And going through that, it's either a secondary education, alternative, uh, I'm not alternative, uh, elementary education, whatever the case may be. I don't know a lot of people. I know most people get a standard for your degree and then they just optionally get this alternative certification. So get your technology degree, as we stated here, get that technology degree. Check out this full listing here that I'm going to, like I said, put in the comment, I mean, pin comment in the description below. Get that information, but stick with the technology pathway. Make yourself only available for technology. Do not make yourself open up options for you. If you want to if you want to be versatile, you want to be able to teach anything because you like teaching and it doesn't bother you, fine, that's great. But you're going to find yourself stressed out the more that you make yourself available to be open for whatever campuses want to do with you. And that's not what we want to go for at, at all. So alternative certification, you check out the pro programs. There will be a tuition that you will have to pay. So keep that in mind as well. To, and for education to pay so low and on certain certain districts you have to spend a lot of money just to get the certifications needed in order to get into this but once you do and you find a campus that's really good it's going to be well worth it all right now school positions let's talk about this so one of the things i did not talk about was the actual 
school positions, but I'm going to keep this brief. So if you work at an elementary campus, you're really going to be probably the only technology teacher on the campus and you'll be treated as a specials person. Where kids, you remember you was elementary school, you used to rotate, you used to have gym one day, then this next day is library day, then the next day is like now it's digital literacy or whatever the case may be. So you need to find an elementary campus that has one vacancy for a technology specialist or teacher. So that way you can teach the students how to type, uh, the young ones how to create digital media, use certain applications, etc. And that's going to be the basis of you doing that. I worked at an elementary campus actually, but it was a paraprofessional. It wasn't a teacher. It was a teacher position, but it was not your standard teaching position. It was just a, a teacher's aide or paraprofessional. If you don't know what the paraprofessional term mean, it was a, a teacher helper position, but I was in there by myself managing a classroom. So that was my first taste into maintaining and managing a technology class as an elementary campus. And I was a specials person, a specials paraprofessional. It was not a pure elective um, official teacher position. So keep that in mind. So middle school, that's where I'm at right now. And I'm teaching Project STEM at our campus where I'm having to focus on coding and design. Uh, and I am teaching the kids how to do touch typing right now because their typing skills are horrible. So I don't want to get into that, but th that's what we're focusing on. We're learning how to use certain applications and we'll be doing some career introductory stuff later on in the year for the kids to go ahead and make uh, preparations, especially the eighth graders to do career based work. All right. Learning how to do resumes and understanding what their pathways are going to be for high school and what they need to start getting their mindsets ready for once they actually leave high school. So that's what I'm actually doing right now in middle school. So keep that in mind. You'll have like, you know, eight different classes, nine, depending on your schedule, 45 minutes, 35 minutes, however your scheduling is for that campus. And you'll just rotate out with all those kids. And then high school is pretty probably more self-evident. You'll do, if you're a technology teacher, you're probably going to have options with coding, web design, cybersecurity. I substituted for certain high schools over the years. I substituted for one class that was uh, a graphic design class and they was teaching Photoshop and everything else. So, but that was a technology application certified person. So that was also there. So I also want to pull this up as well. Um, this is the K through K-12 website and information technology programs for high school students. I'll also leave this link in a pinned comment or disc and description below, but this will tell you, you know, what, what kids would you know, B or, or options they would have in high school if they offer a technology program. All right. So game design and program pathway, networking pathway, uh, programming pathway. As you can see here, students learn the language of computers, Java, HTML3, CSS3. Actually, that should be HTML5. But uh, anyway, I digress. Just like a computer programmer, software developer, information systems manager. Okay. So programming and logic design. So all these things that the kids will learn if you're teaching high school, you will be teaching that. And you get that content from either going to a four-year degree, going through your four-year degree program, as we talked about earlier, and then moving on into this. So you bring the content with you. There, there is none of that coding boot camp, none of that self-talk stuff, <laughs> you know, when you're trying to be a teacher, all right? When you're trying to get in the teacher, you can't just go and tell them that you're self-taught or you took a boot camp and everything. That, no, that, that will... Help out if you're just trying to get into the business world, but you're really trying to be in education. You need to have education. You need to have a standard for your degree unless they continue to lower the bar for you to get in and teach the, these level of students. But for the most part, you need a four year degree. And this is the pathway that I am setting you up on right now It's within one of these degree programs. So none of that coding boot camp, none of that self-taught development stuff. Now, lastly. What we're going to talk about is the students, because I didn't mention the kids at all, except for the grass being greener on the other side or whatnot. I was just more indirectly mentioned in that first video. But what about the students? Aren't the kids more disrespectful than ever? Shouldn't that discourage you from actually teaching into public education today? And you could teach at a charter school, but I never taught at a charter school. I'm only going to speak what I know, but in public education right now. So here's what I have to say about that. Pros and cons. Some schools will have great students, but horrible parental involvement, meaning that parents will be. There was a teacher that gave a, a younger black lady on YouTube or whatnot. She gave an actual anecdote about her experience and her parents being like way too involved to where they would. They was actually involved in the student gossip 
and it was it was just messy. You know, the kids were it, it seen on the surface, and this was a Christian school of all things, and I'm a Christian myself, but this makes us look bad, all right? It was a Christian school of all things, but they, you know, the kids were so they were just disrespectful in a totally different way, not in a ghetto way, in a very obnoxious and, and arrogant and entitled way. And I think that's actually worse than when you're actually teaching the um, the lower the lower socioeconomical group of kids. And the reason why is that because when you're teaching with kids who parents have some affluence, then you have you get all sorts of threats, legal threats. I'm going to sue you. Why did you do this to my child? All this harassment, indirect harassment, all this stuff. You have to be really careful of that. That could probably endanger you more than just working at a, at a campus where it seems like it's the opening scene on Lean on Me, all right? You know, we're not even going to talk about that because I was scary too. But, you know, if you're working at a campus that's in need of a turnaround, you, you probably have more leeway at that campus, believe it or not, than you would just because these kids seem more well-behaved, all right? So there's pros and cons. You have to kind of figure out what you're willing to deal with and just go through that. But if you're teaching an elective, then you really shouldn't really you really need to not complain about anything. You need to be grateful for teaching this elective because a lot of campuses do get their funding cut where they don't have any electives, barely any electives at all outside of your like theater arts or your choir and some athletics. You know, that would be it or band for this most part. But for the most, but people are starting to adopt and take their tech program seriously because of the influx of technology. Like, how do we have all these things that's out right now and we're, we're not preparing kids from a public education standpoint, which is why people do code and boot camps and they do the self-taught route. So there, it's not, there's no, you know, traditional standard um, pathway into getting into those things outside of majoring in computer science. So, you know, pick your poison on that and for, for the for pros and cons. And I would say this, focus on the four pillars, which is classroom management, building that student rapport and relationship, building your lesson plans and your grading. Structure is key. I cannot say that enough. And I, I mentioned this in just in that first video that I did, which we're going to get to that at the end of the video here. But your structure has to be in place. Teachers mess up because they don't know how to implement structure. They get so bogged down by the hype, by getting sent all these emails and they don't know how to prioritize. They just think everything's a priority just because their superiors send it to them. No, you have to be able to, and it's going, it's going to come in time. You're not going to know because you don't know what you don't know. And you're not going to automatically know what's a priority and what's not. But you have to make that a priority to figure out what's a priority. You have to. Because if you don't, you're going to get eaten alive. You're going to think everything's important. You're not going to be able to figure out what do I need to do first? What can I put off? This isn't really important or anything like that. All right. Sometimes even when some of your superiors set these deadlines and you still don't get it done, you're not going to lose your job. At this day and age, they need you. All right. They, they really need you. And even if you seem like you can get fired fast, you better have, you know, something going on on the outside right now, which I didn't really talk about, but I guess that would be a bonus item. But if they seem like they, they want to get rid of you, more than likely, chances are they're not, unless you're that bad, all right? Unless it doesn't seem like you're growing anything else um, and you're crying about receiving support. Let me tell you this about support. You don't expect any support whatsoever. You need to, if you're going to be in this field, you need to learn some things and, and take the initiative on your own in order to be successful as a teacher. You're going to have to read some books or watch some YouTube videos or, or take initiative to visit some a real teacher's classroom to see what they're doing. And you're going to have to make the strengths and step ups on your own. Reason teachers fail is because they're expecting support and they want to blame somebody else because they didn't get the support that they was expecting. All right. And I, and I was in that same position, you know, earlier when I look back, it was my fault because I didn't take the initiative and I was like crying and all this other stuff. I didn't get support, but it was really my fault. You know, I take full responsibility of that. And that's something that now I just share with people. You have to take ownership of your own of your own teacher development. Like we tell the kids, they have to take ownership of their learning. You have to take ownership of you being a good, solid teacher. And you have to learn fast what's a priority and what's not. So you don't feel stressed out and feel like you got so much to do and there's so much on your plate that I'm just swimming. I just feel, I feel like I can never seem to do enough. BS. You can do enough. And these are the four pillars you need to work on. I used to work at Walgreens and my manager then told me to focus on the fundamentals because I didn't know how to 
focus or what what to make a priority like everything seemed important but the fundamentals was making sure that the store was full customers the basic uh, departments of the retail store that needed to be filled with items stayed full and that the money was right those were the fundamentals that's what mattered all right the care if your manager is mad at you because you didn't do something on his little or her list make sure the fundamentals are taken care of in the store and that the store looks nice and it looks good and go from there all right and and that's just that you're gonna have to stand if somebody yells at you don't be concerned about that take uh, not pride that's not the word i want to look for take pleasure in knowing that you did something that you set goals and that you can feel good at the end of the day when you leave that you hit those your own personal goals and that you stand strong in that that's what's going to matter but these are the four pillars that i call in education that you need to make sure you're strong if your classroom management is horrible you will not have any success in the classroom you need to have structure and you need to put systems in place for every little thing almost the biggest systems for me is how kids enter my room and how they exit those are the two important pillars uh underneath classroom management that i need to make sure that kids have an understanding of and other systems get developed as time goes on which shows like restrooms for example how do i actually want to structure restrooms and i really don't you really don't know that until you see the problem and you could attack the problem head on so i saw restrooms i wasn't anticipating restrooms to be an issue but now i see restrooms as an issue this is the system that we're going to put in place in order to solve that so since some systems can only be put in place when the problems actually arise all right because you're not going to know if they're a problem until the problem presents itself so you know you, you want to make sure of that but these these things coming from time and experience you have to allow yourself to make these mistakes but you have to figure out the systems immediately for those mistakes and implement them as fast as possible so you can get better as a teacher no more mr nice guy don't sit up here and try to be the the uh, uh head in the clouds teacher and thinking that you're gonna save everybody the whole hollywood outlook of the the you know mr clark leaning on me at the end of the movie like putting your hand on your shoulders and looking like superman get that crap out of your head like set a structure you know i'm not telling you not to be you if you're a very fun person very friendly person you can still be that friendly person but you better figure out how to put some base in that friendliness all right put some base in that friendliness figure out how to be stern and figure out how to be assertive you don't have to be mean or aggressive but you need to figure out how to actually put your foot down when it comes to kids and, and hold and hold them accountable all right try to be consistent every single day with these things i'm not the most consistent person but i'm more consistent in the classroom because it calls for me to be by necessity i have to be consistent and i'm more forward that with that or every other aspect of my life i'm very inconsistent which is unfortunate but that's something i'm working on but with teaching it it calls for me for that because if i'm not consistent i won't survive and you'll find that to be very mandatory as well when you actually teach so you need to make consistency a very mandatory thing all right get legal representation in the form of teacher organizations that protect teachers from wrongful incidents and that comes from groups like uh atpe here in texas uh after if i said that correctly i'm just spitting out acronyms right now but those are organizations that teachers get signed up with because if there's any wrongful termination or accusations or students lying on you or whatnot and accusing you all these false accusations just be throwing around you need that protection all right so you need to get signed up with that and you need to get that taken care of as well so that is going to be it for this video and actually uh, maybe i shouldn't have said that's going to be it for this video you know what no you know what you need to do you need to watch the video that i'm going to have up here oh maybe it's pointing right here in this direction and you need to check out the first video that i did if you have not done so if you watch this one first so check out that first one get a basic understanding and i'll see you over there